What's up, folks? Uh, someone left a comment about uh, the skank beat on my Raining Blood video. And uh, the skank beat is what I used to call the Slayer beat, uh, which is this. All right? Every Slayer song has it. Um, you know, it's a thrash metal thing in general. You know, Exodus, Metallica, Pantera, they, they all do it. Um, there's, there's a couple things about it that I could, I could talk about that might change your perspective on it. Uh, when I was young growing up, listening to music, I always thought that you know, like when your head moves, I always saw it on that skank beat that the snare was was the dominant part, uh, and I always got confused because it's like, well, I'm always my head's always going down. You know, like that's what I call the downbeat. It was however your your head's moving, right? Whatever hits on that, I always thought it was the snare, and for whatever reason, it always end on like the bass drum. And it, it always confused me. So it was like, all right, so it's just like your typical snare downbeat, but I always found myself like trying to catch up in the end, like the end of the bar or the end of the verse or whatever it is where it's at. Uh, and then it dawned on me that the bass drum is the, is the leading uh, drum during that kind of stuff. In other words... Your head, the way your head's moving during that is you're actually following the bass drum. The snare is in between. And once I realized that, it started to make so much more sense. And uh, then I created a technique with following like the skank beat where my perspective is that it is the bass drum that's following. So... Essentially, uh, this is the ruler of the whole thing as far as feels concerned and control. All is based around the bass drum. Um, so, for example, so. I didn't stop the whole time. Even during like the fills and stuff, I was still leading with my bass drum. Um, now, there's a couple. There's there's a there's a few things. Well, there's there's a technique I use to maintain the fast speed. Now, the way I've always explained it was that as I go down, I'm hitting on the way back up. Right? So. so every time I go down, as I'm going back up, I hit again. Dun, 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 dun. Right? So. Right? So, when you pair that with your bass drum leading, I'll show you. This, if I just do it, it, it might make a little more sense. So, in order to maintain that speed, I employ another little thing where I save energy. Because um, the hardest part about maintaining that kind of speed is, yeah, endurance, doing it the whole time. So, every time you, you can cut off for a cymbal, whenever your hand gets tired, just cut off for a cymbal or do a fill. I mean, that's in drummer world, those are shortcuts in a way because they're freeing your hand up from doing the same constant thing the whole time now if i was to play the skank beat 
and not skip any key notes, uh, I would lose my, my power very quickly. For example, this is, this is me playing the skank beat without skipping any notes. See, I even skipped a note there in the very end. All right, so it's a lot, it's a lot more strenuous to do that. So when I cut off for a cymbal, watch. So as I go for the cymbal, my last note is actually the one with the bass drum, you know, so it's this. Right? So, I, that's, this is my last note. So I'm buying whatever, what is it, an eighth note of time to hit the cymbal. And also, I think there's two eighth notes before I actually pick up with uh, the ride again after the cymbal. So watch. So, real fast. So yeah, the, the big shortcut is to skip those few notes uh, as you're going for a cymbal and getting back. Now also, because you're leading with your bass pedal, remember, this is kind of serving as your time, so this really has nothing to do with it. Something really clicked when I when I realized that that I'm not necessarily following with this. I'm following with the bass drum and the snare, All right, and the bass drum being the main root. Uh, another thing you should try or practice with is just the concept of not using this as your leader. Okay. Now a, a good exercise is to do this. Just to get you comfortable with the idea that you're really, really good at getting these two locked in, uh, your, f your leg and your snare hand. This isn't really that important. Um, and because uh, we're employing this thing. That makes when you're doing the skank beat and you cut out for a cymbal, this, uh, Because you're going out for that and you're buying that extra second of time, these are serving as your time stamps, right? That's what's keeping it together. So all you're doing is simply picking back up to, to finish up how long you go until your next break, right? So. It's called the, the molar technique. I never realized this. I always just thought it was like the Slayer beat. But the idea of kind of like getting two notes out of one movement, right? Where you go down and you hit on your way back, right? So you're not, it's not all elbow doing it. Your elbow is doing one and your wrist is doing the other. Your elbow is doing one, the wrist is doing the other. So that's all you're doing, but right. so 
You see how that kind of works, right? Elbow is doing this, but in reality, elbow is doing this, wrist is doing that on the way back. Okay? Uh, that, that alone buys you a lot more energy than using the same exact amount of force on every single note. Uh, you'd, you'd peter out really quick, and you'd end up, because you're losing your energy, you're slowing down, and that's when you start to, you start to falter. Also, another thing about this is that I think uh, how you hold the stick is very important as well. Um, basically, and I've, I've been told you probably shouldn't take my advice on how you hold your sticks because I, I, I never learned the right way. But however, I do know that there's a fulcrum point, right, that works the best, that feels the best for me. And you're essentially using this and that. Right, this this is serving as your backdrop, and it's got to find that fulcrum point. Okay. Now, another good reason to cut out for symbols and stuff like that, where you save your energy, is that sometimes your hand might start gimping out, and you you'll end up your stick will end up sliding down, so you're you're losing your fulcrum point, and it's getting harder and harder to keep up. So every time I go for a symbol, subconsciously I'm kind of, as I'm doing that, I'm sliding back into my position where I could, uh, where it works a lot better, right? So whenever you're doing it and uh, you feel like you're, you're losing it, you're about to, uh, you know, at the end of that bar, you can cut out for that symbol. And when you cut out, don't hit that last symbol with the, you know, like... Don't hit on the snare, okay? Cut out for that. By getting acquainted with, with doing this. play your bass drum. Always keep that going. Let everything be based around that. Um, and yes, by missing those few notes as you cut out for a, a drum fill or whatever, you can use that time to choke back up into your, you know, the prime stick spot for doing that kind of technique. And uh, I, I think, honestly, if you understand the concept that the bass drum is the leader, and you, you learn how to cut out to go for a cymbal and buy that extra uh, few eighth notes in time, you'll find things get a lot better, okay? So uh, give that a stab. I hope, I hope it made sense, okay? Um, so I'm, I'm not a teacher. I'm not good at this shit, but um, hope it helps. And uh, I'll leave you with an example. Later.